Genetics is a lot like a game of chance. There are 30,000 genes and 46 chromosomes you carry, and a combination of those determines what you look like. But all of those genes come from your family tree and nowhere else. So if you have light hair, blue eyes, and are a great singer, while your parents are dark-haired, brown-eyed, and have no ear for music at all, some of your ancestors must have had those qualities too. Anyway, you inherit 23 chromosomes from either of your parents, and then they start their interplay. Think of it as a sports competition. Whichever team wins determines the traits the child acquires. Some of the players on one team are inherently stronger than their opponents. They're called dominant genes. Their counterparts on the other team are recessive genes. For example, if the mother has hazel eyes that have passed down to every member of her family, her gene responsible for the eye color is dominant. That means her child will most likely have hazel eyes too. But as in any competitive game, both teams have a chance to score. So, if the father of that same child is light-haired, in several generations, his hair color will probably be passed down to the baby. The match goes on like this until one side wins. And that's how children end up looking more like one of their parents than the other. But the rules of the game aren't that short. Since both mother and father are also products of such a match, their genes often get some help from their parents and even grandparents while competing with each other. That's why some traits skip a generation or two. If they didn't appear in your child, it doesn't mean they won't be present in your grandchildren. The balding pattern is one example of this. Let's say the men in your lineage tend to lose hair in their 40s, but only in every other generation. So, if your father, despite being over 50 now, hasn't lost his hair, and your grandfather has not a single strand on his head, that means you're likely to follow in your granddad's footsteps. Unless you're born female, of course. Then, lucky you! Some genes are cheaters, though. They're stronger by default. Curly hair and right-handedness are just a couple of examples. Even if you're the only member of your family tree with brown eyes and curly hair, there's a high chance you'll pass down those traits to your kids. That's especially true if your partner has blue eyes and straight hair. These traits are usually weaker. But even if both parents have a similar complexion, build, hair and eye color, and share everything else, ancestors might still make themselves known in the offspring. There are known cases when two dark-skinned and black-haired parents had light-skinned and red-haired children, and vice versa. Remember, there are 30,000 genes total, and their combinations are close to infinite. Some of those combinations can be predicted with some certainty. Apart from eye and hair color, height is one example. If both parents are tall, the child is likely to match their height or even grow taller. If there's a difference, chances are the child will be somewhere in the middle. Hair and eyes also tend to become lighter or darker with age, but that has nothing to do with genetics. People born with dark eyes and very light hair might grow up to have hazel eyes and light brown hair in adulthood. Melanin is to blame for that, the pigment responsible for your skin, hair, and eye color. Melanin production is most active in childhood and slows down as you grow up. That means you can even change your skin tone with age. Still, brown eyes will never turn to blue ones, and blonde hair won't ever become dark. That's just too much of a shift. There's also a way to predict eye color. For instance, if both parents have the same color eyes, chances are high their child will have the same color too. But in the case of brown and green eyes, that chance is lower, about 75%. With blue eyes in both parents, it's a 99% chance, and they have next to no probability to have a dark-eyed baby. If one of the parents has brown, dark brown, or hazel eyes, and the other has green, gray, or blue, 
it's almost like tossing a coin, with the darker eyes having the upper hand a bit. A couple where one parent has green eyes and the other blue has a 50% chance of giving birth to a child with either color of their eyes. And let's not forget other factors like ethnicity and even nutrition. If your parents weren't tall, but you're taller than both of them, it can be explained by how you were fed while still growing and what kind of sports you played, if any. Most basketball or volleyball players are much taller than average because of their activity. Some closed communities often share traits common to those they live with. That could be anything from height to build or facial complexion. It also often happens that couples from different ethnic groups have children with mixed traits. Such kids get the best from both of their parents and can even have a skin color that's different from either of them. Now let's play a little game and try to find out what your future children might look like based on your genetics. Take a piece of paper and a pen to mark your and your partner's features and check out the results at the end. Disclaimer, this test is no more than a game, so please don't take it too seriously. So, question one, what color eyes do you and your partner have? If they're different, check both. A, dark brown, brown or hazel. B, blue or gray. C, green. Question two, what color hair do you and your partner have? A, dark or light brown. B, blonde. C, red. Question three, how would you describe you and your partner's hair? A, curly. B, straight. C, wavy. Question four, what is the height difference between you and your partner? A, we're of the same or similar height. B, one of us is much taller than the other. Question 5. What skin tone do you and your partner have? A. Dark B. Light Question 6. Are either of you left-handed? A. No B. Yes, one or both of us are Question 7. Does either of you have a cleft chin? A. Yes, one or both of us B. No Okay, now to the answers. First, check how many A's you have in your piece of paper. Even if it's just one of you who has this trait, it's still likely to be passed on to your future child. All the A answers in this test are dominant features. So if it's you who has them, you know what to look for in your future kid. If you have mostly B's or C's, and it's your partner who's genetically dominant, don't be upset either there's still a chance to pass on your traits to posterity. No gene combination is guaranteed. If you both have mostly A's, then it's a perfect harmony. A brown-eyed, right-handed, dark and curly-haired couple with a dark skin tone and a cleft chin have a high chance to receive their little copy when they're born. Same goes for when you both have B's or C's in your answer sheet. Since none of these traits are dominant, you're very likely to have a child who resembles both of you. Now, if you want an even more precise guess, go take a look at your family albums. Take note of all the features you see in your relatives, even your aunts, uncles, and cousins. Does Auntie Jenny have gray eyes, despite everyone else having brown ones? Did Grandpa Will have cute dimples on his cheeks? Is this red hair you see on your great uncle's head? Any of these features have a chance of appearing in your future kid. So, just you wait and see.